It's building. Here we go. We're live, Walter. Nationwide. Worldwide. In the airwaves. Trying to shut down the YouTubes. Hank Strange uh -huh. and Walter Keller. I'm live in the Big Daddy Gun studio. Walter is live in the Big Daddy Walter studio. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Cheese studios. Yeah. yeah. Big Cheese. Making the pizza. Yeah, the pizza the shop. Pizza. Yeah. What's up, man? Uh, same old stuff. Different day, you know. Good, good. I'm liking little, your I'm liking your hat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Made a little progress today on things, but you know. Uh one day at a time, you know. Yeah. Keeping it busy in the shop, man. The people need yeah. guns. Yeah, yeah. The people Folks they, need uh, guns out there. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We're working at it. Yeah. So tonight it's just gonna be me and you. We're gonna talk about, you know, a few things here on the air. Right, a couple of things that we come up sure. with. So I yeah. want to talk about the state of the pro gun agenda, the pro Second Amendment agenda. Are gun guys getting what they want under Trump? How do we feel about it at this point? Right. We, that's that's a little bit of what our conversation is going to be about, and then we'll bring up some other things. If our viewers want to jump in there and um, and uh, comment, leave us questions and stuff like that, we will answer them. We got a few people. Mark Wagner is watching us on the live chat so is jim lewis i'm gonna say what's up to them yeah that's say like, what's up to them on your behalf as well yeah mark wagner like the uh the he's got like a reposting fever bless your yeah, heart mark, mark wagner is awesome man if i can yeah. get more guys like uh mark wagner jim lewis sean effrey yeah you know i could go on and on the guys who are always out there reposting my stuff and sharing it and liking it you know if yeah. I could just clone those guys, man, we've we've got an unstoppable army. Got a force of <laughs> we will take over the world. Yes. World domination. That's what we're plotting. World domination. Yeah, yes. it's on. See, I'm wearing my red hat. I mean oh, and we've got Steve from 904 Outdoors. Oh, yeah. You know, Where's he, he? He he's uh he's in the chat. He couldn't come on. He couldn't come on tonight. He's got some stuff going, some work. He's gotta actually make videos, he says. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still he's still supporting us. He's a good guy. We're gonna see him. He says he has to get some work out of the way because he's gonna be uh, hanging with us on the hacienda this weekend. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So well, um, we'll bust some caps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna bust some caps. So we'll we'll have. I think we're gonna have a couple of people from the nine hundred four outdoors crew there. So it looks like we've also got Brian Long, and I'm just saying what's up to people in the chat right now oh okay I should, I should be i should be I, I should be working and focusing here but i want to say what's up to the folks who support us and all that kind of stuff if you guys have questions let me know if anyone out there has like a headset you know webcam thing and you want to actually jump on here with us let me know and we will make arrangements for you to jump on the show here you can hang out and chat with us and be almost internet famous for a couple of seconds all right, with, what the, with the with the twos and threes of people who are watching this broadcast, <laughs> <laughs> the, the droves, the, yeah, the droves. So, the, the the thing that that um the article actually that started the whole topic today is um there's this article which I saw in the Associated Press, but I also saw it in um in some other places. From it's from Lisa Marie Payne. It's in the Washington Times, Associated Press. A lot of different places are putting it out there, maybe changing the headlines. What's happened to the pro-gun wish list in Washington? Right? So basically, it's talking, it says, uh, gun rights advocates entered the Trump era with high hopes. After years of frustration, they thought a gun-friendly president in Congress would advance their agenda. At the top of the list, a gun owner's ability to bring, a, uh, bring legal weapons across any state lines a policy known as reciprocity. But many of their favorite initiatives have stalled in Washington, set aside as the city is closely watching the investigations into President Donald Trump's administration. Republicans are focused on other priorities, especially healthcare, but also keeping gun rights on the back burner may be the, uh, the fact that because they're, um, in fact, a, it's a heavy lift, basically, that's what this is saying. Uh, Congress faces a public wary of mass shootings, terror attacks, and random violence. Most recently in the shadows of the nation's capital when a, 
a man disgruntled about Trump and conservatives opened fire on a ball field where Republican congressmen were practicing for a baseball game. So, you know, we can we can go on with that. And, and uh, this article basically talks about, uh, you know, why is that? Why is that happening? So that's what I wanted to talk about, Walter. What do you, do you have any thoughts on this before I get in? Before I get in deep? Well, how long has Trump been in office? He hadn't been in office that long. Uh, what are we? Are we in July yet? We're almost there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like fourth is around the corner. <laughs> I think people like in this in this society of everything happening instantly, um, they figure it's all, all of a sudden that he was just going to stop everything and and we're going to go full on gun and it. He's got other things to do, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it's not going to happen, some of this stuff, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So you're just going to have to be patient. That's all, I think. Uh, yeah, listen, I think there's a point to what you're saying, but I think the flip side of that is, and what a lot of people feel, if it doesn't happen sooner, it pro it's less likely to happen later. Right? I, I, I get that, too. I mean, I can feel that it'll get forgotten. Or pushed back and pushed back yeah. and pushed and, back. And then also what will happen is that um, if they don't have the political power right now, if they can't do the heavy lifting to, to make some pro-gun things go through, then if they don't have it now, what happens when we get another, you know, when we get some, some other elections that go into place here in Congress, maybe they flip some seats. And now it's looking good. We had that thing, uh, what was that, in Georgia? recently that they right. that, um, oh, yeah. Democrats uh, liberals thought they would take over there and that didn't really happen no but we've got to keep people pumped up somehow through all these different elections that are going to come up and if if things flip I mean look let's look at the healthcare thing for example right if, yeah. if they're focusing on the healthcare thing I think it started out as two two senators that they had to get on board to make it happen then it became three then it became five Four. right right I think right. now it's like six. <laughs> right. Well, every every oh, that, this is the problem with these senators, right? They all want to get the limelight by going, no, I'm not going for this. Uh, yeah. Negotiate with me. And 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 I'm not happy with any of it because I don't want the government to be in health care at all. So mm -hmm. except for the people who can't take care of themselves, which there are people that need help. Um I I it's not the government's place to Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Yeah, it's not the government's place to um tell me where and when and how or who and who you know all that stuff with healthcare it doesn't yeah. work nothing that gov work does like that works period yeah this, this is not going to work either but um they're they're too scared of their shadow to just to say oh we're done you're on your own and yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately, this is the sausage making of getting bills and stuff like that to go through. Now, I believe there was like a little ray of hope when Congress overturned. There was some restrictions based on mental health issues that got overturned early. You know, I don't yeah. know how far that really pushes along freedom. I'm not saying that was a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But, right, right. Like you know, I, said, I don't I don't really know that that really pushes the freedom yeah. that we're looking for. Yeah. I mean, there are people that need help. But I think a lot of people need to learn how to help themselves. And um, what are we talking about here? And when it comes to healthcare? Yeah, when it comes to healthcare, right, 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 mm -hmm. right. Take care of their own needs, not look to government to take care of them. Um, but the politicians are not going to, they're so scared that there's going to be a backlash if they don't do something, whatever yeah. something is. And um, yeah. we might and, just and end up, we just might end up with a, a dumbed down uh, Obamacare, which. Yeah. Well, so this is the this is the thing. This is one of the things that happens with people. I think if you look at the healthcare situation, right? How really how bad was healthcare if we go back eight years ago? It was. <laughs> it's it, looking pretty good right now. And it was cheaper too. So yeah. So um, how do we get built up into that frenzy? It's kind of the way that um, that we sell things to people in the world, right? Well, you get yeah, them yeah. whipped up, make it, make them think this healthcare is horrible. Gotta Twenty-six fix it. million people will, will go without. There's only like thirteen million people without right now. So how do you get twenty-six million without? Yeah, and and pretty much we're living in a country here in America. We don't really deny people healthcare. You know, you go to, you go to, the, you go to the hospital. They can't say no. They have to take you. Um, not like back yeah. in the old days where the private hospitals could turn you away. Now yeah. they can't. So you're going to yeah. get some kind of care. 
Yeah, we, we have lots of systems in place. I mean, including we have charitable things. We have hospitals that operate um, as charities and, and get donations and stuff like that. And that's how they take care of people. We have things that happen when, when people run into really, um, really that's dire hard. consequences. Yeah, with, with so far as health folks get together and put money for them. There isn't really, there's not really a system that denies people health care, but there was a better system eight years ago. I know that. I have Crohn's disease, right? So, and I've had it for the last uh, 20 years. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a crazy, crazy roller coaster ride with, with my Crohn's. I know that's not the worst thing out there, but I've spent a lot of time in the hospital, had lots of surgeries. I had to take lots of different medication, you know. And I could tell you, and Lola is in the healthcare industry. She's in the business. She works for a hospital, right? And it's gotten really, really bad. Yeah, so right. how that, but what happened? We all got whipped up into this thing. Not me. I was like, leave this thing alone, please. But people got whipped up and then, and they said, oh, we got to deal with this healthcare thing. So th that's how it got dealt with supposedly the first time with Obamacare. And now we have to deal with it again. We're, we're too busy. We can't read it. We just have to pass it. Remember that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. So that's how we got into the situation. Right. And now folks out there are trying to fix it. I think a lot of politicians, lots of Republicans out there feel that the health care thing is something they can go back to their constituents with. And, and see, go. we did something. Yeah. So that's why they're out there trying to fix it. And you know what? They're not wrong. I mean, we, we do need that to get fixed because our first fix that we did in the last, um, you know, six years or so, that fix really, really. But was there, was there the gum I mean, in the works? Are you going to take apart your engine in your car? Cause you think there's a problem when there really isn't a problem. I mean, was there really a problem eight years ago or six years ago? No, I don't think so. That's, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't think there was a problem, but it's too late. I mean, we got whipped into the frenzy, <laughs> so, right? It's like, it's like when someone, it's like you, you get convinced you have to buy a car, you got to buy a house. Listen, well, dare I say it, you got to buy this gun. <laughs> well, I, I, I did buy one the other day. Yeah, but, you got, and you, and what happened with you, Walter? You got whipped into a frenzy no, right I, here, live on the air. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it happens to you too. <laughs> Yeah. So but. that's how they got us. I mean, listen, the truth of it is that was psychological. I mean, when, when you when you look at of how this happened, all the things that have come out about how it happened, they the strategists told them to just straight up lie to us <laughs> and tell us if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. You can keep your doctor. Yeah, right. Yeah. All all of that all of that stuff and it got really, really, really bad. You know, and because of my Crohn's, Lola and I would pay for what they what they d decided to call a Cadillac, a Cadillac plan. It's not as good as the plan that this congressman and senators have, but they called it that so we can go. Why do those guys need a Cadillac plan? Yeah, why you why you get better health care than me? You know, well, that basically kind of we were we were paying more for it because we needed it. We knew that we needed it, and that's gone away. That doesn't exist anymore. You can't. You don't even have the option of doing that anymore. Ours. We, we buy our own and this went up constantly ever since they started talking about this stuff, even before they passed it, it was going up. Yeah. So now we're in this. So now we're in this trap. This is one of the things that's happening. And, and so the politicians feel like they have to fix healthcare. We, sh we really should fix it because we made it worse. So now we have to do something, but, and, and Congress has pushed it through. It's now in the hands of the Senate, but there's some senators, <laughs> you know, there's some senators that are going to grandstand here and make trouble because they want to make sure this is how this is how politics works. They want to get in the spotlight. They want everyone to realize, like, why they're so awesome. <laughs> well, right? if you if you're used to being the the uh, the guy pushing for uh, no government and less government and then you succumb to the force and sign the bill and join the thing without a little bit of a fight. You, your, 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 your people back home go, well, I don't like him no more. He didn't put up a fight. You know? Yeah. So now here's the problem, though. While they're grandstanding, while they're wasting time, basically they're going to shoot their load. And when that's over with, they're going to roll over and go to sleep and forget about us, gun guys. That's how I feel about this. Well, you just got to keep poking them. You know, I mean, you got to keep. Does that work for you? What? 
Does that work for you? The first part you said? No, you just said you got to keep poking him. So when Mrs. Safety pokes Harbor me. Firearms pokes you, <laughs> um, after you've given up the ghost, so to speak, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep this clean. It's kind of like poking a bear, you know? You'll poke it so long, and sometimes <laughs> it just... It, it, ah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's why, like, it, you know, you said it, it's probably too soon, and I don't argue with you on that. It, I think it... it it maybe is too soon, but this is like such a precarious situation that we're in because there's there's too soon and there's too late and there's this like real razor thin line in between those two things where we get into too late where they will not have the power if they can't if 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 they cannot get this healthcare thing done right now, how do they have the power? Okay, it looks like we've got Jim Lewis has joined us. Jim, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Yes, this is this is someone who supports us on Patreon, Walter. All right, cool. Yeah, Mr. Lewis is a supporter of us on Patreon. We we love those guys. So Jim's joining us. What's up, Jim? Uh, not much. What, where? So first of all, tell the folks out there generally where are you from? Where, what part of America? Where's your clandestine location? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm from uh, Ardmore, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, nice. You in the middle of the country. Yeah, have I have I ever been to Oklahoma, Lola? We've driven through. Okay, I've driven through, so that's official. Did I get gas in Oklahoma? Yes, sir. Okay, so I've been there, Jim. <laughs> Hi, sweet. Uh, Tulsa Gun Show a few times for me. Oh, uh, okay, that's not too far away. Yeah, that's where I bought that shotgun that I've been posting pictures <laughs> up there. Uh, yeah, the big one. Oh, yeah. What happened? Uh, you're 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 there. We we can't see you, but we can hear we can hear your voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got a yeah. black screen here. But anyways, um, yeah, I, uh, I I think that our Republicans out there need to grow a backbone and stand up with the president to get all this stuff through. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think yeah. they need to stop grandstanding. They're in charge right now. They need to run the show. Yes, That's sir. You know, take yeah. advantage of that. You know, you know, do like the Democrats did when they were in power. Just, you don't like it? Well, that's life in the big city. Yeah, just yeah. bulldoze them. Bulldoze them. Then, no matter what you do, like they, I saw um, yesterday. I think they were sending headstones to Republicans <laughs> over this health care thing, right? And and you know, here's this weird thing that happens with Republicans versus Democrats. Democrats come out and play all innocent. And lovely and sweet and mild mannered. Oh yeah. Okay. And then and then they just like b behind the scenes they stab you in the back and they you know they work real hard. It's a real you know house of cards type of situation if you've seen that on Netflix. And then with Republicans they try to uh, to be honorable and be everybody's play. friends. Yeah. And and then Democrats just bulldoze right over them because but they're still trying to be fair. You can't do that. You got to stand your ground. Patriots stand your ground. Absolutely. I think I think the reason why we have Trump is because so many of us, me included, lots of Americans out there were sick and tired of the bullshit. Sick and tired of hearing Amen. them apologize and apologize for this and I'm sorry yeah. for that. And I, you know. Yeah. I apologize for nothing. No, we don't have anything to apologize for. No. Right. So, I mean, how do you f how do you feel, Jim, about uh, what you've been seeing in the last? Well, you know, I'm not trying to beat up on Trump. Um, I, and I think there's folks out there saying this in the comments. No. You know, Trump can only do so much. It's these <laughs> these, uh, you know, these Republican congressmen. How, how do you feel about what's been going on in the last six months? Uh, I feel that the uh, the Democratic obstructionist and uh, the uh, leftover uh, Obamas uh, appointees in, in the fourth branch of government uh, that, that they're leaking and trying to distract Trump from, you know, fulfilling his promises to us. They need to be found out and the Democrats need to just shut up. It's, it's over. They lost. They need to get behind him. And uh, then, of course, again, again, our uh, Republicans don't need to have this Tea Party and this party and that party, they're Republicans. They ought to stand together. Right. So do you think there's like an insurgency going on? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what what any, were you going to say, any, Walter? Anytime you leave the enemy in place, you're going to have problems. Agreed. Yeah. 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 And, and 
and they're 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 a well organized enemy. So you gotta you gotta come in and, as they say, drain the swamp and kick them all out. You might go for a couple of weeks or a month without anybody in charge, but the sun will still come up. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, I think that part. I mean, maybe part of it is the um, the Trump administration should have just outright fired a whole bunch of people when they came in. You know, I I, I think there's probably there's just there's only so much of that they could have done. You know, there were some appointees that that they couldn't get um, they couldn't get pushed through and all that kind of stuff in time. You know, I think that there are insurgents in terms of Democrats and liberals out there that are doing damage. But look, I'll be honest with you. I think Republicans are out there running an insurgency as well. You have to remember that Trump took over the Republican Party. Agreed. Agreed. He beat, uh, what, 11 uh, politicians, career politicians, and he's, he's just a businessman? Yeah. Yeah. And I could tell you, I could tell you from personal experience that here... Um, in my area, there were guys who were given the Republican Party here once Trump won the nomination. They were given control of it by Republicans, but those Republicans did not expect them to do well and work hard and try to get Trump elected. They expected them to do the opposite. And so when those guys went out, I'm just telling you, I, I hear this from these guys. And when they went out there and they were working hard for Trump and they were spending money and getting signs and, you know, and getting together and having meetings and all that kind of stuff, the Republican establishment was like, what the hell are you guys doing? Yeah, because Trump didn't play by the rules. So, yeah, so that's that's part of the problem that we still have here. And why I think because, look, honestly, do we really think that because they have an R next to their name that they're pro gun, pro Second Amendment people, really? No, no, no. And Trump well, came in. He's a uh, he's a New Yorker. You know, he's mm -hmm. gonna he's gonna treat you different than than a career politician. <laughs> also, Trump doesn't have. I, I don't think Trump had anything to lose, man. This it was like out of a movie. It was like Brewster's Millions or just name it. All those crazy movies out there. Once where, again, he didn't. You know, he flew around in his own jet. So yeah, you know, he, he went wherever he wanted. He did what he wanted. And he said what he wanted. And if you don't like it, well. Yeah, he he's he was already living in a bigger house than the White House. <laughs> you know, a, a lot more gold plated or more, more gold faucets in his house than the White House too. Yeah. I guarantee you that. And it worked for him. And and I think that like I remember on um, on election night, I saw that look on his face like, oh shit, did did this app? This just went down. We won. And it's been it's been tough. And I'm telling you, a big part of why it's tough is that the Republicans are not on his side. And they're not serious about this. And it's a lot like what happened with Obama if we go back to it, right? He, he was able to get health care pushed through, but then really didn't get that much done after that. And here we are. We're just following the same playbook all over again. We're like, okay, we're going to overturn health care. I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I think we should. I know. I've been suffering, and I've seen lots of folks out there suffering from it. You know, but and we definitely have to do something about it. But we're gonna we're gonna waste our energy on that instead of just going. Okay, that's it. This is what we're doing. We're making this thing happen, and we're moving on to other stuff. Well, I, I can testify to uh, being a, a victim of, uh, of Obamacare. Uh, uh, my Humana went from seventy two dollars a month to one hundred and seventy four dollars a month. Uh, my deductibles went up. My coverage has gone down. I'm an 11 year cancer survivor. I'm disabled. I live on a disability fixed income. And, uh, you know, uh, like Walter was saying before, uh, we need to teach people how to pick themselves up instead of just handing them everything they want. There's too many kids and, and actually adults in this world that feel they're entitled to everything. You know, too many kids that play baseball and everybody gets a partici participation trophy. They don't they don't uh, lose. You know, you got to right. learn to lose. Absolutely. That that builds character. Yes. Sir. That uh, makes you a winner. <laughs> hey, that's, yeah. that, that's my that's why my son will stop playing soccer because yeah. he saw everybody was getting the same thing. It's like, well, why put any effort out? Well, if you lose, you go back to your own field and you practice harder and you come back and you beat them. Or maybe you don't play soccer anymore. Yeah. Either or, you know, if you, if you can't uh, tolerate the way it's being uh, coached or, or run, then, you know, get out of it. 
Yeah, here I'm gonna just I'm just gonna mention a, a a comment from Mark Wagner, who also is a big supporter of ours, and we appreciate your support, Jim. Like I said before, no, man, no especially worries. No worries, especially man. for someone that's on you know that's on a uh, fixed income and all that kind of stuff supporting us. That's a big deal. We take that seriously here. No, I, I love you, Mola. I think y'all do a great thing, and I thank you, Innovate. You're an innovator in uh, the the videos. I mean, you're not just about guns. The the young man that you had on talking to you on your last podcast, you mm -hmm. brought him to the forefront and what he's doing. Yeah. And I, I really like that. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do this differently. You know, I'm not knocking anyone else out there. I just want to do it my way. So let me let me uh, comment on uh, let me give you guys Mark's comments. He says people will continue to make bad decisions as long as someone else is paying the tab. People are driven through incentives to consume every amount of health care. Agreed. You know, and, and this is exactly the this is exactly the problem. You know, you, you were talking about your son, Walter. Same thing happened to my son. There was a school trip. He he just graduated and, and he's off to college right now. But there was a school trip going on when he was in high school and uh, he had to pay for it. So they said, well, if you go out there and you sell this candy and you make this money, that will, you know, that's how you can pay for it. Right. So he went out there diligently and sold a whole bunch of candy, you know, was working really hard. And I think he put together like five, six hundred bucks for this trip. And then the school said to him, well, guess what? We're going to take most of that money and give it to these other kids over here. Who can't afford it. Yeah. And, you're, and your parents are going to have to pay for you to go on this trip. And he was really mad. And I said and, and, and I was kind of happy because I said, this is what you need to learn about the world that we live in. Welcome to socialism. Yeah. Oh man, I hope not. Yeah. Well, you know, and this is this. I mean, this is what's happening in schools and stuff like that, and it's what's happening in society. You know, and that's why we're not really going to be able to. We're not going to be able to fix these things until we we figure out how to get past that. The problem is, is that we've passed the tipping point, I think. And most people now, I think the reason why, even we were talking about this yesterday, the reason why people are coming to America, remember people used to come here to America and then work really hard and start businesses and do all these awesome things. And now people just want to come to America and just chillax. Get on the cheese. Well, they, they want some freebies. Yeah. You know, there, there are people out there that are illegal aliens that get more support than I can afford. I can get. I can't. I, my wife and I get too much money at living on less than twenty four thousand dollars a year to get for me to get Medicaid. And yeah. with that, I want to thank you two gentlemen and Lola for allowing me to be in here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off and let you guys have your show back. Oh, All thanks, right. Jim. It was a pleasure having you on, man. Anytime. Oh, it, it was. It's my honor. Uh, believe me, I I think both of you guys are in your own right innovators, and uh, I love Walter's uh, uh, the way he looks at his weapons and how he designs, and uh, and the way you guys do your videos. So, uh, just once again, I've been, it's been a blessing for me to be here and be able to speak with you guys. Thank you, Jim. We love Thank you too, man. Go ahead, Walter. Thanks. Oh, no worries, man. Anytime. All right. Yeah, so that, that was cool, Jim, joining in here and uh, hanging out with us. You know, good. yeah, um, I think uh, let me get this comment before we go on here. Dallas Howard says, do you guys think health care is a right or a privilege? What say you, Walter Keller? Uh, well, it ain't a right. OK, what, what do you call a right? I mean, you got a right to go get it if you need it, but it, you don't got a right for me to pay for it. Yeah, I think it's a privilege. Um, I'll just answer that straight up. Well, it's a well I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell you you can't have it, but you're going to have to figure out how you're going to finance it. Um, yeah, and, and everyone know. can't, you know, why should everyone necessarily get exactly the same thing? Everybody doesn't need the same thing. No, absolutely not. Um, if you're young, if you're young and healthy, you don't need it right now. Maybe you need something for catastrophic occurrences in the future when right. you're not so young right. and healthy. Right. You I know. Mean, and, 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 and that's part of the problem is the young folks, they don't see that they need it, so they don't feel they should have to pay for it. Um, but if you watch the advertising for Obamacare on TV, it's all young folks in the commercials. Yeah, also know? some young folks are out there doing, one, some destructive things, 
Right. And two, they think that um, you know someone else should pay for their prophylactics, you know, well, yeah, for, like for oh, their birth control. <laughs> Susie's not going to get her pills. Yeah. Well, Susie got her pills before, and Su and Joe find figured out how to buy those rubbers. So, you yeah. know, yeah, look, it's just like the Obama money, right? People want to know where there's their where are their Obama pills. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why is not he not paying for my mortgage? Remember yeah. that? Remember that woman that said, "I'm going to get all my gasoline free, and he's going to pay my mortgage yeah. or something." I'm like, yeah. Well, that's what people really believed. I mean, and if if it's a if it's a right, if healthcare is a right, then well, what about auto insurance? What about my ammunition? Yeah, I mean, what we what else? You know, there's all these other things that we could I, put. I in feel there. sad when I don't have any ammunition, so you should get me my ammunition now. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to cheapen what our rights are. We do have rights in America. Our rights in America stand out from other rights that people have around the world. It shouldn't be like that. People, human beings are born with, um, you know, with Inalable rights. Inalienable rights, right? Obviously, yeah. yes. Self-defense and things like that. And, yeah. Um, look at the, the Constitution, I guess we'll say. It doesn't, or the, all the, the founders, they didn't have anything about health care. I mean, back then, a doctor came and he... You came to see you at your house, or you went to see him, and you, yeah. you did your thing, and you paid for it. But what's but what's the whole premise of insurance? What does insurance mean? You know what what is what is insurance? Insurance is this thing that you. It's a gamble. Yeah, there's like life insurance, there's health insurance, there's car insurance. You have insurance for your apartment, you know, oh, or your right, home. Right, 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 right. You, you, we have different kinds of insurance, and the insurance companies take a risk, and you pay for this risk that they take. Right, they're in the game of risk. Yeah, it's a calculated risk, but if you if you have if you load it on one side and go, yeah, you've got to take care of people no matter what, then who who the hell is going to pay for that thing? That's why the insurance companies don't have anything to do with it, because well, that's why they're dropping all this stuff, and that's why even hospitals and stuff like that. When people work for hospitals, they're reducing. There's people who work like you remember, guys. You, people used to want to work for a hospital because they had better health care. I, I spent most of my younger life working in. Uh, in the in the healthcare industry, I did. Was, I worked at hospitals was, and stuff like that. Yeah, the healthcare was part of the job. Yeah, well, and you had good healthcare. Not anymore. Lola's over here, like, nope, that doesn't exist anymore. And yeah, that's so true. Because who's gonna who's gonna take that on? Who's who? What doctors and what you know? Who's gonna want to do your X rays and your blood tests and all this kind of stuff when the government comes in and goes, "This is all the money you're getting. This is how much I'm gonna pay for that band aid, and that's that." Yeah. So I'm not saying I think that we should have an excellent healthcare system. Yeah, you know, I, I think that people should have should have uh, access to that. And if you, for whatever reason, think, hey, I need more than other people, you should be able to do all of this. There should be a lot of options. Pay a little bit more, and you get better. Yeah. Um, Zachary Cahill says anyone who knows basic economics knew Obamacare was a terrible plan. That's from that's from Zachary Obama, Cahill. Obamacare <laughs> is not about healthcare; it's about control. Yeah. So the thing, but but here's the problem. Here's the problem. The the Obamacare zombie is still trying to eat our brains in 2017. Obama is off somewhere like wearing sarongs. He's he's holding hands with what's his face, the Virgin Atlantic guy. That's what he's yeah. doing. You know, he's <laughs> off somewhere just like surfing the waves, having a good old time. That's awesome. He's he's planning out his super mega presidential library that's going to outdo any other presidential library hey, that ever of, was. Speaking of that, you see where they drug off a lot of documents to his library to hide them? So no, can't, I missed that. Really? <laughs> that's so shocking. <laughs> the, letter, the Loretta Lynch stuff and a lot of the stuff's been taken to the library. Hmm. Maybe to get it out of or limit the access or I don't know. I've heard about it on the news and I'm like, well, that's strange. Why would you take that stuff. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many horrible things that are going on, and here we still are fighting the Obamacare zombie. That's the point I'm making to you. Yeah, that's what's blocking the, these gun things that we're expecting, and the Russian diversion. That's yeah. a that's well, a purposeful diversion too. Yeah, well, you saw the news that came out about C on CNN, right? How they yeah, they're all lying, that, and it's all a big story. Yeah, and how they keep pushing the Russia story. So even if they go off to another thing. This is not. This is absolutely happening at CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS. All these. This is why people are turning away from the news media. This is why people are listening to me and you. I mean, and who are we? We're just like Joe Schmo. 
<laughs> hey, that nutty <laughs> guy in Florida. Yeah, you know, those crazy guys in Florida, you know, yeah. that knuckleheaded dude that, wear, that has like a mohawk. Yeah. What, what the hell does he on. know? But people are listening to us because they they are sick and tired. You know, remember that thing? I'm sick and tired. I'm not going to take it's, it anymore. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's yeah, what it is. absolutely. That's why they're listening to us because we know no one needs to tell us. We don't need the investigations. That's just confirmation. <laughs> We already know that they're pushing this thing on us and they're distracting everyone with Russia where there's like nothing there. Who gives a crap? What makes you think that Russia didn't put Obama in the White House in the first place? Are we gonna are we gonna sit here and go back now through the last 20, 30 years of Russia trying to influence our elections? And then on top of that, guess what? We, America, tries to influence elections all over Everywhere. the world. Everywhere. Every Every country is always sticking their nose in every other country's business. Our friends are not friends. Yeah. And everybody in between wants to, wants to, it's, it's been going on forever. So. Yeah. So, you know, um, someone added to that. I don't know. Was that Zachary Cahill? No. That's yeah. Me. Oh, okay. Lola is adding this. She says Medicare covers low income Americans and the emergency department at hospitals cover the uninsured Medicaid 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 I'm sorry Medicaid covers low-income Americans and the emergency department of hospitals cover the quote-unquote uninsured you know but it's listen this is the kind of thing like can you imagine let, let's just say this for a second before I get back to the gun thing but because mm -hmm. we can't get away from health care because like I said it's a zombie. zombie no matter how much we shoot it if we don't shoot it in the head Gotta take the head off yeah we can't stop it Imagine if the government controlled and the people who own Apple, the people who run Apple, they these are these are communists, right? These are very liberal people. And imagine if the government came in and controlled Apple. There'd be a there, or Subaru. That, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, but, but here's the thing. Do you I mean app that's what I use. I, I use an iPhone. You use an iPhone, right? I right. use an iPhone right there. So so the thing is is if the government was controlling the production of that iPhone, uh -oh. most of us wouldn't have it. Because because Apple was able to come out there when they first came out with a smart quote unquote smartphone, other companies, I remember this, like Microsoft held a funeral for a mock funeral. They buried them in effigy. They were like, this is it. This is the end of Apple. But they came out, they innovated, they did something that no one thought they were going to be able to do. They set the bar really high for smartphones. That's why we all have better smartphones. Even if you don't use an iPhone, even if you use, let's say you use a Samsung Galaxy S900 or whatever it is you use, you have a better smartphone today because no one got in the way of Apple and told them what to do and how and and uh, what price to sell the phone for and what features right. and all that kind of stuff. Right. Why the hell do we think, why do the same people that, that are running that company think that it, it's okay for the government to come in and tell us how to run healthcare when they don't want the government to come in and tell them how to run a Apple? Right? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that crazy? Am I sounding insane to you? Mm. Yeah, but a lot of those people that, that that run Apple think that you should. Uh, I don't have. They, they support all the healthcare thing. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying yeah, to you. They it, support this stuff, but they don't want that. They don't want it to be. They don't want um, that their companies to be run like that, right? You wouldn't think so. Um, I mean, if you look at Elon Musk at SpaceX and all that, all the <laughs> stuff. That's a bad that, subject for me. I don't yeah, know. you know. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not in favor of like all the money that we're giving. Oh, to yeah, he's like a Tesla. Leech. He's yeah. sucked on the side of the government. You know, it's like, yeah, well, it, it's a weird thing, right? We're giving we're giving them all this money, but we're not telling them what to do. He is deciding what he wants to do. And so this is the thing that I think I think we can solve health care if we just let it run. I know that there's going to be uh, companies that do terrible things like the you know, that young guy who um, runs that. Um, that biofarm company, and they and they were selling. Uh, what was the name of that drug that the guy was selling for like a thousand dollars a shot? Huh? Yeah. yeah, the EpiPen, the whole EpiPen yeah, yeah, yeah. fiasco or whatever. But guess what happens when people do stuff like that? We identify their asses, <laughs> and we put them up there and go, "Look at this guy," and wow. then we do, you know, and and something but something will happen behind that. I don't think that we need to really go in there and force. 
you know, so for example, even in that particular situation, it sounds like, oh man, this is something the government should get out there and beat this guy up and take him down. What really should happen is because they're selling that thing for a thousand bucks, you know, someone else should be able to come in there and compete with those guys. That's right. A free market will take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I, I know it sounds scary. No, I'm not scared of it. I thought I thought Trump would call in all the insurance guys and say, hey, look, guys, we're going to open this back up for you. And like it used to be and and go that route. But yeah, I don't know. Well, I well think to get back to it, I think what happened is an insurgency. But the insurgency that's slowing everything down, I don't think it's really the Democrats so much. No, you know, I'm not saying they're not. The, it goes across the board because a lot of a lot of rich w Republicans have their money in health care, too you know, in, in different companies and businesses and all that. They don't want to see it go away. Yeah. Also, I just don't think it's in the best interest of a lot of Republicans out there for Trump to do well. It's not. It's not. It's not in their in their best interest. Once again, because he's he, completely outside of the party. He doesn't he's doing play by the rules. Wants. Yeah. You hear look them how, talking about it all the time. Look how he's manipulating the press right now. He or how he manipulated Comey. Yeah. He, he's, he's pulling lawyer stuff on him where he like bait him up and See what he says, and yeah, then, because oh, well. he because he grew up in the land of if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. That this is the reason why I don't have like I grew up in New York City, and um, I mean I came to America in 1983 and grew up in New York City, and we lived there until something like 1998 or 99, and I never you know you, you hear things about Trump right this you know he was out there doing stuff. Yeah, he told me some stuff, yeah, yeah. A lot of things that you hear now about Trump you never heard then you know I've got footage of Oprah Winfrey on her show in 1988 asking Trump to run for president okay well but that's what he's a Democrat a, today, too yeah but today he's a bad guy he's not a Democrat anymore supposedly so yeah so you know um, so but let they, me they'd still ahead. they'd sit they'd still sit down and, and 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 talk business if they had to so yeah, Liberty Life wants to know, so where does the U.S. currency stand with all the spending? So um, that's like inflation. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we're going to have more of that. Um, and then Chris Bullis says, I got kicked off Medicaid when my disability got put through. They said I have too much money, but I couldn't afford Obamacare. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, when his disability got put through, he got kicked off Medicaid. And that, you know, this is this is the thing. This is like this is why we're like for me personally, if if folks want to know if we're going to really get some good second amendment stuff pushed through, if you ask me right now, right now I'm going to tell you we have very low chances of that <laughs> happening. Because because this is a real thing right now. The healthcare thing is a real thing. It's the reason why the the Republican senators are standing here on this one. It's right. why they're going to stand here and make this fight because right, right. this is their leverage. Well, this that's what time. Trump Trump ran on the one of his things was repealing Obamacare. So something's got to happen with that. You know, he didn't run on guns. Kind of not really. But listen, okay. I'm going to say that he did run on guns. I'm not going to accept that he didn't run on guns. Well, that was okay. one of the, the NRA. The NRA never asked us whether or not we wanted them to endorse Trump, and they did. And you know, we for the for the most part, a lot of gun guys were out there like, okay, that's good, right? So I think it. I don't think it's fair to say that he didn't run on guns. That was you one know? of the things. It was one of the problems. It was a big thing. It was a big part of. Yeah of yeah. you know why he got our support and we do you know i think in terms of getting um gorsuch um in the supreme court that's a good thing you know we may get kennedy that's those that's a that's a big reason why we did what we did i think there's only so much he can do with that pen you know in executive orders right, right. you don't want to you don't want to turn into obama uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. I think. I think he should just sign every single thing he possibly I mean, can. The hair might executive be executive order. The hair might yeah. be a challenge of turning into Obama, but you know, aside yeah, from everything else, I don't I mean, think there's any danger of of him being uh, anything like Obama. But there's only so much he could do, right? There's only well, I mean, so about much the, he could do. about the executive orders. I mean, you don't want to rule by executive order. Yeah, but that's but this is the way that it is. I mean, you, you know, they say when in Rome, do as the Romans do. If you want to survive. And you're uh, in Rome. I'm sorry. You got to act like you're in Rome. They all died of lead poisoning. So um. yeah, <laughs> progress. <laughs> they they didn't have good health care back then. No, and they 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 had a tendency to 
probably a lot of venereal diseases too. Um, yeah. But anyways, that's another story. Okay. Yeah, that's a, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into, uh, I know exactly what you're thinking of, but I can't, the, the name <laughs> escapes me. Yeah. And there's a movie, there's a classic movie. Oh, Caliglia? <laughs> yeah, Caliglia, there you go. <laughs> Just no, go I look at Caliglia. Ever, I know about it, but I've never seen the whole movie. you never so. seen it? Oh, okay. Yeah, but I, know I don't think, the, I, yeah, I, I, don't think a, I was ever allowed to see that movie as a kid. Yeah, that's a that's a penthouse production, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but you know, I mean, with all seriousness, this is the problem that we have now because something has to happen with the healthcare thing. The, we're just oh. going to lose all our energy here because this is where everyone's going to stand and fight, and you know, and and maybe there's some sense to it. I don't know if they're really going to add anything productive to what's going on. I think it's um, there'll be some more choices. Yeah. But we need to, at some point, move past the healthcare thing. And the, the, the longer it takes to move past healthcare, the, the more closer, other things don't get done. Yeah, the closer we get to other elections, uh, you know, when, when these guys start going home and the news, this is why CNN and all these other places are making them stick to the Russian news. Because what they want to say is that Trump is not a legit. Can you remember when, when Obama was president? And everyone was trying to say that he wasn't a legitimate president and that was like racist and, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. all kinds of horrible things were wrong right. with people because they said that. So now, psycho but this is the thing about Democrats. They play dirty, man. They're not afraid to play mm -hmm. dirty. Republicans are afraid to play dirty. Right. Yeah. They think they think that. Uh, it's they, I think I think Republicans are seriously willing to go down to send America to flush America down the drain. Because in the long run, they think they're going to win if, if they discredit Trump, if, if they make us lose hope. They think, hey, we'll just, we'll just maintain this two-party system. Because basically, Trump was like a virus that injected himself in the Republican Party and then little, took over. He's a little bit of Ebola for a while. Just, it'll be all right once it runs its course. You know? <laughs> the yeah. Ebola. But, you know, I think, this is what, I think what he did is what we, what we all need to do. We need to take over these things. You know, we need to keep taking over these different if we're pretty much in America. Unfortunately, we're stuck with this two party system. Yeah, you for know. the time being. Yeah. yeah, we had the Tea Party guys out there for a while. Then the Tea Party guys like in some cases, including here where I live, the Tea Party guys took over the Republican Party and they got it and they're not letting go. And other people out there need to do that, like take over these parties. I'll be okay. honest with you. People, sh there's people out there that should probably take over the Democrats. You well, know. the Democrats don't get their act together. They're gone. I mean, they've gotten so far to the left that they're no better than Castro or, or Yeah, but they're pretty good at programming. They're pretty good at brainwashing. That's what they're doing right now. Every single day you turn on the news, they're gonna tell you ten to twelve things that's wrong with Trump and how horrible he was. You know, if he warns Syria not to not to like gas it's their people again. They're like, that's oh, so horrible. How can he do that? He's that's what, to I, that's what I want. Yeah. That's what I that's what I saw in the news today. And that's kind of we're, we're going down this path again where we're starting to say he might do something. Remember when Saddam Hussein might do this and he might have that. Yeah. And so what does that lead WMD? to? WMD. Yeah. What are we now? He did have he did have weapons of mass destruction. There was they did find things, but you didn't mm -hmm. hear about it because that wasn't the narrative, but I think they're going down this path now with Syria that they're like saying, we need to do something more. Now, mm -hmm. I don't think you want to see your boys go to Syria um, <laughs> or fight the Russians. Um, <laughs> oh, I, no, I think, I think, I, I, I think I mean, we should wall, I think we should wall the place up, <laughs> ship all the immigrants back and let them, let them fend for themselves. You know I mean? I'm, yeah, I think ultimately people have to take responsibilities for their countries, especially if they think, you know, if you want to come to America, um, you're coming to America for a reason. Don't come here and then dilute the reason why you came here yeah, so that other people a... don't have those freedoms. And if you feel like you want to come to America because you want to make it the horrible country that you just came from, just stay in that country <laughs> and, con and continue the horribleness. If you want to bomb it into a sh hole, just stay right there and keep bombing it into a sh hole. And you yeah. can live in it. Yeah. And you know if, I mean? if somebody out there really wants to, you know, really wants to support the, the craziness that's going on, I think a lot of these actors and entertainers and, you know, these uh, luminaries that let we them, have. Let them, let them set up a camp in their yard. 
See how or long that they should lasts. take their asses over there. No, they should. Why can't no. they could go over to those places and peace and love those the the bad guys over there yeah. to death? See how that works. <laughs> Go give those uh, go give those uh, bearded fellows a big hug and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think if Kathy Griffin went over to Syria, she could solve the whole thing. I don't think you her... know with one with a couple of jokes, she can she can just you know defuse that whole situation, man. She should totally go there and bring world peace. It's like Dennis Rodman going to North Korea. You know that's going to fix the whole North Korea thing. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Um, <laughs> you know, but I bet I, he, does he does he drink Hennessy too? I don't know, man. Because, Dennis, because, have you seen Have you seen Dennis Rodman? <laughs> I think he drinks a lot worse stuff than Hennessy. Probably, he, so, what is that? Uh, you know, oh, they call him the Worm, right? Is no way. Is he the Worm? Yeah, I thought he was. Is that what they call was him? It, the worm? Was it Rodman? I don't. I don't know. I have no. I, I don't know. I don't even know anything about alcohol. Okay. Well, well Kim. Do I, I know? know if it's Kim Jong or his father. They used to be like a huge consumer of Hennessy. I mean, by the case. So. I don't know. No. Yeah. I I just think that like to get back to this whole thing, I think that we have to get off the healthcare thing. Yeah, we, we gotta move to, on. Yeah, we have to move on. The longer we stick on it, the less the chances look for me with right. guns. And I don't think anything's really happened. Um, I know folks want to see suppressors come off the NFA. People want to see machine patience, guns. Patience grass. You know, they want to see all that. Uh, reciprocity would be a good thing right now. It would go a long way to making america a better safer place i think just the, just give us reciprocity okay no more short barrel rifles no more sharp barrel shotguns it's yeah <laughs> but I, I i'm telling you that I'm, this is what i'm saying i'm telling you that the likelihood of that happening is very low and and i hate to be the naysayer here in the gun world because i know i know um, a lot of good gun guys out there are hoping that suppressors are going to come off this thing they're hoping they're going to be able to do this and that and I get it. I understand. But guess what? The longer that this you see this healthcare crap, the more you see them every every day when in the news they're talking about Russia and this thing about um, Trump and they're carrying on with all that nonsense. When they when they realize that we're tired of Russia, they'll just come up with another thing and right, they'll just yeah. keep going and keep going. And the more that you see that, that should be a greater and greater indication to you that we're not going to get these things. Well, someone needs yeah. to take charge. Yeah. Well, then what we need to do about it. Trump will have um, to take charge, too. Yeah. J.R. Hunt says Dennis Rodman was the worm and the goat. I don't know how the hell you could be the worm and you could be the goat. Like one of those things is inside of the other thing. <laughs> but I guess Dennis Rodman is like inside out. He, he's his own granddad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so thanks for that. Um JR. But you know what? I think the thing is, here's how I think we do it. You can you can tell me when I'm wrong, okay. <laughs> which I know you, you often do. But um, you know what? We have to continue to take over the Republican Party. It's not good enough to have Trump in the White House. There's lots of Republicans out there that need to be replaced. They're not really Republicans. This two party system that we have, Democrats and Republicans are pretty much the same damn thing. Pretty much, yep. All they're concerned about is returning the next year. Yep, that's, that's it. it. That's all they care about. They've got the great health care. Um, you know, I mean, you know, myself, I'd, I'd be really bored up there. I mean, back in the old days, the old guys had a pretty good party going on a lot of times. Yeah, but how can you be bored? I mean, I don't think Trump is bored. I think Trump is no, up no, there. Not, He's not him, but the old, um, you know, the the Mitch McConnell's the uh, yeah, but they but they're not bored because they have bodyguards and they have limos and they've got money and people want to take them to dinner and take them out to the golf course and fly them out here and take them over to this place and they're not bored they're balling out man they they're living a, a a greater life than any rapper Drake has nothing on these dudes yeah but okay uh, now they get down and I know you know who Drake is don't even try to front I. <laughs> There's no cocaine and there's no hooker, so it's like, okay. How do you know that? I'm pretty sure there's lots of cocaine and lots of hookers in Hollywood. And, and, and if no, no, I'm not about Hollywood, but I'm talking about Washington. I mean, not Hollywood. I'm talking, well, I meant Congress in Washington. Yeah, at least we – look, I'm going to tell you, the congressmen and um, congressmen and senators out there, they're definitely hookers as far as <laughs> well, I'm they're concerned. Whores. They're just straight-up whores. They are, yeah. though. I mean, you know, it's just – We've Once got to again, replace them, man. I, I would rather have you there. 
I want. I would rather have you there because you know I what? know you would go in there and kick some asses and do what you got to do, and then get the hell out. And one term, you get health care for life. One term. All you got to do is one term, and you never have, you get retirement and health care for life. It's a pretty good yeah. gig. Yeah, someone's got to call you the honorable, the honorable so and so, congressman, yep. blah blah blah, senator. Get your ass out here and do something. You know? Yeah. Well, that th we've got to get rid of those people. We've got to figure right. out how to do it. We've got to get like mad. I think right now, because we got Trump in the White House, because we got uh, like a Republican majority, we're getting complacent. They did it in '94. They won the House in '94. Then they came in and they were all excited and they got lazy. Yeah, there's we're sitting around going, "Oh, somebody's going to come along and save me." <laughs> Listen, I used to be a Democrat, you know, I mean, I came to America as a young kid. I thought, hey, this was the way to go. Whatever. Actually, technically, I'm still on the books as a Democrat here in Florida. But years ago, I think it was like 2004 or something like that. I remember telling Lola, Democrats, Repo I just woke up one day. I had an epiphany. <laughs> you know, I got woke. You know how the kids say hashtag woke? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you never heard of that one. Okay. <laughs> But I, I woke up like one a good, day. Is that like a good ball movement or something or what? It's like yeah, something like that happened, man. I had like a nice flush with my system and I had clarity. I had clarity and I woke up and I told Lola, I said, you know what? Nobody's coming to save us. Not a Democrat, not, not a Republican, a Republican, not your mama. Nope. <laughs> Nobody is coming to save us. We have to learn how to save ourselves. Right, right, right. You know, and, and we're still in that situation. These people out there, not there's no one. I mean, you know, this is one of the things like even as a gun community, there aren't people out there who are really interested in coming to save us. Everyone's out there trying to figure out how to like make their money and all that. I get it. I understand yeah. that. But I want to actually see things happen. You know, I haven't I haven't been in the gun world long enough to get all the guns and stuff like that that I want, to have all the fun that I want, to really enjoy this thing. I don't want this to disappear a couple of years from now. No, no, you don't. But remember, everything is cyclic in the world. I've figured this out. It's big cycles, big circles. So we're gonna go, let me see, we went really extreme with Obama, where we're starting to look like Venezuela, except for the food shortages. And then, and now we're going to Trump and, you know, so yeah, but what I'm saying is, can he do it on his own, or do we need to get rid of, like, when these when these things come around, do we need to make some changes, or do we need to make, like, so much noise that well, maybe, these sons of bitches know that we're serious and go, oh, these people aren't messing around, I need to get my act together and, and give them what they want? Uh, hopefully, hopefully the some of these places these, where these Republicans live, like, uh, what is his face out in Arizona? Our, our war, our POW senator. Um, and then Mitch McConnell and these other places. I hope the people there wake up and say, hey, you know, you guys are still, why don't you get on the board with the president and get some things done instead of arguing and, and making him and saying bad things about him and everything else? I mean, yeah. The Democrats get over it. He's the president. He's right, the president. Right. He got Democrats. elected fair and square, <laughs> not Russia. <laughs> Putin didn't do this. But one thing that the Democrats do, you know, regardless who they are, they always suck up and get together, you know, and, and, and because get, they're playing, they're playing this game better than us, man. Well, you know, the Game of Thrones, if you want to put it in a Game of Thrones analogy, I know you don't know. You don't know well, what I'm talking about. No, Game I don't actually. Not too much. I'd stay away from that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, House of Cards, you don't know about that either. Oh, right? uh, yeah. One one little thing and the whole thing falls down. So No, House of Cards is a show on Netflix. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's a show on can Netflix. I sell it? Can I sell it? Do they use guns? It's basically, okay, House of Cards, it's one of those shows that's based off of a British show. Oh. So, you know, um, but basically, House of Cards is like uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, um, just under different guys, and they show all these backstabbing uh, right, things right, that they've right, done, right. like killing like people. Never-ending intrigue. Yeah. And the thing is, is that they here, – here's the point, if you don't know what House of Cards or Game of Thrones is. They play the game better. Democrats are playing the game better. And we're not playing that game. You know, they're, if you look at liberals, these people are unashamed, unabashed. They're proud. They're out there. Today is like, you know, in, in I think in New York City, you got the gay pride thing going on. That was yesterday, I think, yeah. Was it yesterday? And I don't have anything against that. We need to be out and proud. We need to be loud about who we are, that we're gun guys. We need to make a lot of noise and be unashamed, unabashed. We need to, you know, not back down. We know We need to not be complacent. We need to get out there and say, we want this. Stop messing around.
Right, right. Well, that requires we to get together. And as you know, in the gun world, there's the NRA, there's the Second Amendment Foundation, there's this one, there's that one, there's that one, there's this one. And they can't seem to play well. They don't play well together because they've, at one side or another, pissed one another off. It's kind of like the NRA throwing out the concealed carry group. Yeah, the U.S. US and the reason they threw them out because USCCA. Right. The NRA threw them out because the NRA started their own thing like that. Yeah. Their well, it's just, it's this. Well, basically, you know, why can't why can't they be in the same hall together? Are they so scared? Is NRA so scared of them that that they're going to take away their their base or something? You know? This is a horrible thing that happened at the NRA that we all, including me, missed it at the time that it happened. I mean, I saw it happening and I posted on it, but this the whole craziness of the NRA. This is really what escaped that what the, what the NRA did to the USCCA. Yeah. What what? Um, you know. But this is the same thing that I'm talking about. There are people who are in positions that we put them there, you know, so we vote them there. We give them money and we put them there. We, we support them there or whatever it is you think that we do. We put these folks there. But guess what? They don't have the power. We have it. We give right, it to yeah. them. And yeah, if we yeah. give it to them, we have the ability unless we take get it away. Complacent. Yeah, we could take it away. Right, right, right. You know, and that's how you that's how you keep them on the wraps. I'm not saying, hey, we should go out there and pull down the NRA. I'm going to say the same no. thing to you that I said about the Republicans. What if you're really mad about this? Run for office, because even if you're a councilman locally, you know, the, if you get the grandiose stuff of being a congressman or a senator or whatever, fine. But run for office. The same thing with the NRA. Run for these positions take these positions away from these guys because even if the nra decided to do their own thing i that's not i, I don't find anything wrong with the nra doing their own insurance hey that's probably makes own. it better but don't 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 beat down the other guys yeah, don't, don't take thing. another gun guy and stab right. him up and leave him in the alley bleeding <laughs> <laughs> just because you're scared or, or you feel it can't be. They can't be scared. They're the NRA. They could. They could kick anyone. There's no gun group out there that the NRA can't kick their asses because we all support them. We all. Right. We, we're going to give them our money, no matter how much I complain about them. I'm not trying to bring down the NRA. No, no. We no. need to inject ourselves like a virus in their asses and Ooh, take that's... over. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Seriously. Well... Well, I think that that's what we have to do. We have to do this the same thing that Trump did. Trump injected himself into the Republican Party and took over. He didn't well, say, "Oh, I'm going to go for the Green Party. I'm going to go for the Independents. I'm going to I'm going to try to do it on the Demo He knew he wasn't going to be able to do it on the Democratic side because they 8 years ago promised that to Hillary. For all we know, they promised that to her if she can make it through the next, you know, the next couple of years that she could do know. it again. Are they that stupid? Are they really that stupid? No, they're they're intent on shoving this pill down our throat, no matter. No, I mean, are the Dem is the Democratic Party that stupid to think that, that we would go for Hillary Clinton again? She's one of the most hated, hated people in the in the well, world. Well, if not, if not, what they're going to do is find some kind, you know, like maybe you'll get the guy from Facebook or oh, Zuckerberg, some yeah, celebrity the, or the, this, the cute little, this person, the, the cute little guy from from Facebook. Um, we we'll probably yeah. get banned now, but um. Yeah. Oh, um, well, we, we get banned every day, man. It's a regular occurrence for us to get banned from some. You know what? We got banned on our thing that we did last night. Well, not banned, but they demonetized the video that we did last night. They demonetized it because we had ISIS. Not in the title, in the description. <laughs> you are not allowed to say the words ISIS on YouTube. <laughs> so even though I'm saying ISIS, you're not allowed to say ISIS. <laughs> Let's see oh. how many times we can say ISIS. So they just, de you know, they just pulled it because we said ISIS. <laughs> ISIS. You know, that's how stupid a lot of the stuff is going on. And these are the people who want to run the country. And I don't think they're going to give up. Maybe they won't support Hillary. Maybe they realize, but Hillary isn't, isn't going out, man. She there's, will start digging up bodies in the desert. <laughs> there's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's a whole nother thing for bodies and the Clintons. I mean, how many, let me ask you a question. How many people you know that have been murdered? Who me? Yeah, people that that I know personally that have yeah. been murdered. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I can't think of one person that I know personally. Have you, have you seen the list of how many people the Clintons know that have been murdered? Personally, yeah, I know. So it's a heavy list. That's why we had that fake news story. Did you see that? The fake story about how they found um, they found some canisters, some barrels on the Chappaqua property with body parts in it. I didn't see that one. 
Yeah, completely fake story. Don't fall for it. Don't share yeah. it. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's a plant. There's people out there planting these stories, you know, just like the flat earth thing. Have you heard right. about that? <laughs> flat earth. Oh, there's a, it's flat, really? Yeah, there's a whole flat earth resurgency going well, yeah, on yeah, right yeah. now. Why can't I see the Eiffel Tower from my house then? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know, I think I, I'm pretty sure. Look, I'm telling you, there's people out there who are planting all these things. It's, yeah, a, deliberate, yeah. it's a deliberate thing that they're doing. Um, and even that fake story about the Clintons was set up there. And there are news media outlets online who just went out there. Even though it was put up by a satirical website, there are people who just went and reposted it. People click on it and see what's going on, and there's advertising attached. Yeah, or people read the headline and and just go for that. And right. and what it does is it um, it is ammunition. It's proof if you put those kinds of things out there that we don't know what we're talking about, and right. it deflates right. us. You know, it takes away the um, that that oomph, that that energy that we have that we get that we're mad and we want to fight about this. Right, right. right. So we have to try to um, we have Stay to try focus. to avoid that. Focus. Yeah, I see. Chris Bullis said. The, those dudes see more hookers than Amsterdam. I guess he's talking about. I don't know if he's talking. Is he talking about me and you that we see Not more me. hookers than Amsterdam? <laughs> One thing I can say I've never seen. Um, no, he's talking about the congressman. I know. Don't, okay, yeah. Chris, don't start sending me. Yeah, don't start that rumor. No, Chris is gonna go. No, I wasn't talking about you. No. I'm so scared of hookers. You can ask Lola, man. I, I'm i like, you know, I'm a germ freak. Oh. So I don't even have the ability. You know, yeah. I saw that. Um, what was it? I saw somewhere when, when, you know, when they do the sex ed thing and they show you if you get an STD, that big, massive, like. Oh, they stick it up. That the, needle that you have to yeah. get in your Johnson. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I was like, no thanks. Nope. I don't want that ever. No. <laughs> That's no. the last thing. Just. You know. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know how we got on that one, but okay. Well, I mean, that day I'm in the shop and I'm working on stuff, and I, for some reason, I, I this idea of the uh, like the Japanese are coming up with these like sex um, robots, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, how do you cleanse a sex robot? I design in my head. I designed the whole process for cleaning a sex robot. Really, Walter? Like a machine <laughs> that would just it docks like a. This is what you were thinking about. <laughs> It's a mechanical thing. Sorry. Uh, you're a man after my own heart. I can't, I can't lie to you and tell you I've never thought about that. <laughs> you gotta someone's going to gotta, gonna have to clean up after the mess. Yeah. Know, I see someone out there. Eric T says Lola needs to uh, make us. She needs to moderate us, bring us back down to earth. So are there any other things? I think there were some other things you wanted to talk about. I think we've pretty much established that the, the progress we've made so far in six months with guns, or for the Second Amendment is big goose egg zero so far, and I well, blame I blame Republicans for that. At least one thing we have we have some people in 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 the office that um, or or family members of the people in the office that are actually um, kind of gun people. So mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a probably a little bug in somebody's ear. Yeah. And, um, I, I, yeah. That's I think, I look, say. I think if you want you're to know, than think, having, you're better than having a Democrat in there just to say that and I'll be done with it. Well, I think I think Trump's serious. You know, I mean, he, he was at um, the NRA again. He didn't just come get the endorsement and then, and then win the presidency and say, and screw those by, guys. Yeah, yeah. He came. His son came. You know, I think they're out there trying to do it. The truth, the reality here is they can't do it on their own, man. No. We can't just like sit at home thinking, oh, suppressors are going to come on. I'm going to be able to buy a suppressor for 25 cents. You know, we we need to. Um, I want those things to happen. I think you want those things to happen. Yeah, I'd like to see it. It'll be interesting. Yeah. But we've got to go out there and make it happen. And and this, you know, this brings me to something I wanted to bring up. There's a news article talking about billionaire Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett says the real problem with the U.S. economy is people like him, Warren Buffett. And basically, if you read the article, what he's saying. Um, is that the problem that's happening is that he's got too much money and all the rich guys have too much money. So what, <laughs> what is too much money? Uh, he's got 75 billion. Well, so I mean, you know, that's, that's not enough for me. I could find a way to spend. I want 75 it. trillion, but you know, but, whatever. you know what? That's great. I, I, I think that's wonderful. I mean, if you have 7,500 trillion billion, that's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, who's to say that's too much? 
if you earned it, you didn't steal it from somebody. Yeah, I don't think uh, just like when you're talking about hookers in Amsterdam, I don't think there's ever too much. But you know, <laughs> well, you can so, have hey, too much. You can have too much cocaine, and you'll be dead. But <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, and I, I, I probably it. wouldn't survive it. But so um, here's what Warren Buffett has done. He's created something called the Giving Pledge. And so I want to talk to folks about this. You know, I'm going to get in. I'm going to start getting into conspiracy theories. So I'm going to invite. Oh, we've got God. a lot of people watching. Are, we gonna, are you going to be on late night now, like on late night radio? We're, getting in, we're gonna we're gonna get into some conspiracy theories here, Walter. Whether uh, you like, I know you have a few conspiracy theories yourself. Don't uh, act like you know. There's some conspiracies that you believe in, and we're going to start getting into it here. And I'm going to invite all the folks because we actually have a lot of people watching us right now. I'm going to invite you guys to start like sending out some of the conspiracy What's stuff. What's your favorite one? Yeah. I mean, look, hey, we'll dig into it. We'll debunk it. We'll talk about it. We'll make fun of it. Maybe some of them are real. Uh, there's, there's always truth in everything. Okay. Now, so here's what Warren Buffett did. And this is kind of, this has got me worried. He created something called the Giving Pledge. Okay. So, for me, let me explain what the giving pledge. You guys can look this up. Google Warren Buffett, the giving pledge. So basically, Warren Buffett has gotten a bunch of billionaires in America. I think it's about, uh, it's like uh, somewhere between 50 and 100 billionaires in America have made this pledge to give away half of their money in their lifetime or before they die. So they call it the giving pledge, and it's a massive charity that they created and they are putting their money there. The problem is no one, I searched, I spent a lot of time today searching to try to find out what they were actually doing with this money in this giving pledge organization that they're creating, and no, no, no one's talking about that. It's a pledge that he got these people to sign up for, but they don't have to actually do anything. So they I got don't... an idea. Mm -hmm. 34 billion, that's a lot of healthcare, isn't it? Yeah, but what I'm trying to say to you, this is a dangerous thing because what oh, if, yeah. if you ever if if you if you're not a conspiracy guy and when people start talking about the Illuminati, you're like, yeah, that's bullshit. Well, when you have all these billionaires that get together, put money into something called the giving pledge, and there's no transparency as to how that you can see who's in there, but you can't see how much money and where oh, the right. money's going to and what charities is going to and all that. Uh, you look, ultimately that's their business, but it's a little scary that you've got these guys out there putting money, all this money into something, and they control it. I think it's gonna be, I think that's gonna be a bad thing for actual charities out there, because now, you know, all these billionaires have control over these charities. They can hire themselves, hire their family members, put them all, their own selves in there, they're gonna get the tax write-offs and all that, and we don't know what the hell they're doing with these things, but we know when you have people like Bill and Melinda Gates, they'll be out there trying to pacify us, <laughs> you or know, limit our reproduction. <laughs> effect change. Yeah. Or Are you against affecting change? Affect change against our asses. If they decide, oh. hmm, this gun thing, we're going to solve this gun thing. And we've got trillions of, that's, that's, I mean, that's serious money that these guys have, right? Yeah. And they have a serious agenda. I'm, I'm, look, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But if there's ever a conspiracy theory out there, I think we need to start. I'm going to kick it off with this giving pledge thing. Somebody needs to look into this. Oh, I'm sure somebody out there knows all about it already. So, and probably about the hundred thousand UN troops yeah. that are out in the desert. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. I mean, and folks I'm, out there I'm are saying, "Hey, it's you know, it's their money, and they could do what they want with it." Right. And I totally, I totally agree with that. But it's a, you know, the thing about it is, is that this is really like to me, um, there's something going on here. I think we should we should pay close attention to that. We should be at least as human beings be aware of what's going on. I'm not trying to knock them for getting together and doing their thing. What I'm trying to yes. say is we need to get together and do our thing. Right, right. You know, think, those guys are getting together and they have their agenda and they have serious amounts of money. They've got the media and all kinds of things against us and we need to get together. One of the things they keep saying is how much money Trump has and blah blah blah. Look at this. When you have Warren Buffett Bill Gates and all these billionaires in America or multi-billionaires that are getting together and doing this stuff, I think you should pay attention to that. I'm not I'm not saying that it shouldn't be. I'm just saying you need to pay attention. Uh, yeah. I'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. New new Illuminati out there. New yeah. Illuminati. <laughs>
<laughs> all right, all right. So any, I'm gonna. Lola's giving me the wrap up sign. I want to thank everyone for joining us. We've been having fun. Walter, what do you want to What do you want to talk about before Let's you go see out? Here, chemical turns. I'm just flipping through the new stuff right now and just okay. see if there's anything that like. Oh, look at this. Lavar Bell makes appearance at WWE Raw. Now that's important stuff. <laughs> I don't even know who you're talking about. The wrestlers. The wrestlers. Rest so wrestling, you watch? No, I don't. You... I'm just having fun with. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Back, I was about to say. back in the day, I did enjoy the local wrestling stuff when it was on TV because it's entertainment, you know. Right. But not taking it serious like some people do. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, if as long as you understand. But I think we have the WWF right now in lots of things. We have it at the gun world. We have it yeah. in uh, politics. Yeah. <laughs> we that's a lot true. of uh, we got a lot of fake wrestling going on out there. So <laughs> that's how you could put it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. a lot of put, trying to put you in a headlock. You know. Absolutely. So I want to tell, I want to thank everyone out there for watching. Definitely check out Safety Harbor Firearms. That's where Walter's from. He does sponsor my channel. He allows me to do this. That's how come I get to come up here and say whatever I want. You can see, I, I, I take a lot of time and energy to, to make sure the people I deal with, that we get along with each other, that they realize how crazy I am <laughs> and what kind of things I would do and say. And Walter has been very supportive of me and my family. So yeah. I encourage you guys to check him out. He's a good guy. As well as Rand CLP, they support us as, as well. Um, we've also got Andrews Custom Leather, Mr. Yeah. Sam Andrews. I'm talking to Sam to try to get him on one of these live hangouts. So you guys be on the lookout for that. We're negotiating. I need to make him, he needs to make me a ginormous cell phone holder out of some exotic yeah. materials. Oh, he was doing it. I don't know. We could probably talk him into it, but the phones keep changing so fast. Yeah, this thing so is we'll almost see. the same size as my little Glock, so the two might be able to nest together real nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, hey, you know that might work. So, and you've you've got Sam Andrews, and you also have these guys, Big Daddy Guns. That's yep. who we're in the studio of. They are big supporters. They're giving me this this broadband here to talk about all the craziness that I do. So, I want to thank them and everyone who supports us on Patreon. We've got. People coming on every day to support us on Patreon. It is really much needed. The whole YouTube situation out there is actually getting worse for not just me, but other YouTubers. It's actually getting worse. I'm pretty sure that at this point, Google has written algorithms to never let the money come back because of what I was just saying to you guys. They're in control. I mean, you saw that in the news. They would, they've been doing a lot of shisty stuff. Google, what makes you think they won't do shisty stuff to us gun guys? So... You can't even, there's no, well, IS, IS, you can't even, no, that's a, ISIS, say it. ISIS. ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, peace out. I'm going to end the broadcast right now <laughs> on that note. ISIS. ISIS. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>